Hi, I'm John from Moa Magic in the UK and I'm joined today by Sam who's going to help me make the comparisons in this video. This is a follow-on from a video I made in 2019 where I compared the external features and components of the Husqvarna 430X with the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite. So if you haven't already watched that one, I'd recommend watching it first as I go into a lot of detail comparing the external features on both these machines. We'll put a link in the description below. We received a lot of great feedback from you on that video. And we've also received lots of requests to see what's under the cover of these two popular models in the same way I've done in some of my other videos like the Ambrosio 20 versus the 415 where I go into a lot of detail regarding the internal components of the two products. But before we get into detail on that, I just want to show you another model here. So since that video in 2019, Ambrosio has released a bigger brother to the 4.0, or the 4.36 Elite. Now, the internal components are virtually the same, so we won't go into those today, but we just wanted to get these out side by side so you can see a comparison. So all the design cues are the same, but the 4.36 has wider rear wheels, a larger mowing deck, a 36 centimeter blade, and a bigger battery. So this machine's rated for up to 6,000 square meters. So if you've got a larger garden, a garden larger than the 3,500 that the 4.0 is rated for, then consider the 4.36 Elite. This one would compare well to the Husqvarna 450X. If you were making a comparison between the two models, this bigger brother would uh, compare nicely to that machine. So today we're going to strip down both of these robots, let you have a really good look around inside, check out all the internal parts and see how they're made. It's going to be quite nerdy, so if you're not that way inclined, it might not be your cup of tea, but hopefully you'll enjoy it and find it useful. I'm going to be showing you the Husqvarna 430X and Sam's going to be showing you the insides of the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite. Let's start with the 430X. First we need to remove the top bumper cover. This is secured on by clipping onto four plastic ball joints which are spring loaded in the, each corner and that gives the robot its floating cover action. To remove it we just need to apply a bit of force to each corner of the robot to unpop those ball joints and then we lift the cover forward and it's plugged in at the front of the chassis these rubber grommets which you just unplug and you can disconnect the cables from the middle. And that allows us to remove the cover. So on the 4.0 Elite, rather than a, a bump shell, there's actually a full width rubber mechanical bumper at the front, you can see there. And the whole machine itself is actually in two separate pieces, so you can, you can see that there. So what this does is it allows the mowing deck to flex like this to deal with uneven ground. Um, so as we look at this, there's two separate sections of the machine that house different components. So we're gonna start at the back, and I'm gonna remove this rear cover here, which is held on by 10 stainless steel machine thread screws, which are underneath. We'll just start taking them off now. cover should now lift off on this one. Yeah. Same as the rear cover on the Ambrosio. Disconnect the ribbon cable. And I've just got the stop button and the rain sensor to disconnect. Just feed that through to have that please. Yeah, thank you. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Just two cables underneath there. So underneath the shell of the Husqvarna I'll just point out um, some of the, the things you see. These are the spring loaded ball joints. Um, you've got a Hall, Hall effect sensor at the front which reacts to a magnet underneath the front cover at the front there. Tells the robot the position of the top cover. You've got your display panel and GSM module. By comparison, the rear cover in the 4.0 Elite just houses the stop button and the rain sensor, and then obviously you've got the cover for the screen there. But underneath, you can see there, we've got the motherboard, the touchscreen module, 
We've got the GPS module here as well as the antenna and then you can see under here that's where the drive motors are seated. With the top cover removed on the Husfana, uh, we can see all the components laid out here. At the front we've got the wire sensor PCB, mowing motor, and then there's a, a motor for the electric high to cut adjustment just here. We've got the, the battery, the motherboard, and then the two drive motors. So again, by comparison on the Ambrosio, to see a bit more, I've just got to remove the top cover here. So there's a bit of trim. Let me just take off. That just pops off there. And then we've got another 10 stainless steel machine thread screws. So I'll just remove those now so we can have a look under the top cover as well. So with the front cover off, we can see a bit more what's going on inside the 4.0 Elite. So we've got the blade motor here, got the uh, blade height of cut motor just there. You can see that there on the side of the blade motor. And then you've got all the wire sensor equipment just at the front there with the bumper, with the bumper mechanism that you can see there. So we're going to have a closer look underneath here, which I just need to disconnect this cable. have a look underneath. So we've got the, the wire sensors, we've got the, the bump sensor here which has got a Hall effect sensor which detects when the, uh, when the robot has bumped into something and then we've got the drop-off sensors for the front wheels as well. So quite a lot housed in that, uh, in that there. And then underneath that you can now see the mechanism for the bumper itself. So there's a quite a lot going on here. There's uh, lots of stainless steel parts, machined aluminium, the kind of stuff that you don't really see in a lot of uh, d domestic machinery, um, but that's sort of on display here. You see that's quite satisfying, the way that, the way that bumps and operates. By comparison, these are the, the bumper modules on the uh, Husqvarna. You see the little ball joints on the top and then the sprung-loaded mechanism underneath. Now we've got the covers removed and we've familiarised ourselves with the layout on both these robots, we're going to strip them all down, take all the parts out, lay them out on the table and have a look at them individually. Right, we've been busy stripping all the parts off the two mowers and we've laid out all the major components so you can see them side by side. We're left with just the bare chassis from both robots. This is the Husqvarna. Um, just left some of the wiring loom in place and we just removed one of the front wheels on each. Uh, the way that the front wheels are held on on the Husqvarna, there's a single use star washer which you actually have to destroy to, to take the wheel off. Uh, I think on yours and, yeah, by comparison, you can see here, um, you've just got a, 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 a circlip on the, on the top there that you can reuse if you need to take the front wheel off. Yeah. Right, looking at the batteries on these two robots, this is the Husqvarna 430X battery. Uh, it's an 18 volt battery at 5.2 amp hours, and it's a 93.6 watt hour battery. I think it's just there. So by comparison, the battery in the Ambrosio 4.0, it's 25.9 volts, uh, it's uh, an 8.7 amp hour battery, and it's 225 watt hours. But you see the two side by side, the, uh, just the difference in size there is immediately obvious. Um, and there is a larger battery available as an option for the, uh, uh, the 4.0, and also the 4.36 of the 10.35 amp hour battery. It's 260 watt hours. And is that the same physical size? It is the same size, right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these are the two batteries. Right, we'll look at the front wheels now on the two uh, robots. This is the one from the Husqvarna, and that's the one from the, the 4.0. I just removed the one, as I mentioned earlier, because this one is secured on 
with a Starlock washer, a push-on fix, which is a one-time use um, way of fixing it on. Yeah, but as you can see, the circlet from the Ambrosia one, we've been able to put that one back on because you can reuse it. And uh, next to each other, you can see the difference sort of straight away. I mean, I don't know how, how much yours weighs, but Ooh, that's a lot of this feels like it's about half the weight of the Ambrosia one. We've got a set of scales, we'll, we'll confirm that later. Yeah. Um, but, um, we'll just measure the, uh, the axle shafts. So. Yeah. So on, on, on your one, I'll let you measure yours. Yeah, of course. And uh, so it's just under eight mil. Yeah. Eight point nine mil. So then the shaft on the Ambrosia is uh, it'll, let's call it eleven point five. Eleven point five mil. Yeah. Okay. And then and the tire tread. So yeah. on this one, the tire tread doesn't go to the full width of the wheel. Um, the full width looks very very similar, but the actual mm. tire tread is 32 mil yeah whereas i've got that rubberized tread all the way to the end of it and that's 44 mil so quite a, quite a larger surface area it's got in terms of the in terms of what it's going to be yeah. traveling on we we'll just hold um, up the uh, the two wheels yeah. so you can see and, and then of course the ambrosia has this guard on as well which prevents debris from wrapping around the axle and causing problems in motion as well as a much thicker armature here going from the main shaft onto the wheel itself that's uh, stainless steel, is it, on that? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, stainless steel. Yeah, yeah, this shaft is also stainless steel. And uh, I think they've both got bearings in. And it's got a bearing in yeah. the way as well, yeah. Nice smooth yeah. motion on that. Yeah, so we'll just weigh that and see how they compare. So the Husqvarna wheel yeah. is uh, 242 grams. Okay. And the Ambrosia, which felt about double the weight, is 550. So yeah, considerably more more wheel there. Yeah, a bit more substantial, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. We'll have a look at the uh, mowing motors on both these robots. This is the one from the Husqvarna 430X. It's an 18 volt DC brushless induction motor. Looks nice quality. Um, fairly typical of what you'd expect on this size machine with this style of blade. What have we got on the... Yeah, so I mean that is that is a good looking sort of brushless motor. So this is the this is the mowing motor off of the Ambrosio 4.0, also a brushless induction motor. Um, it's actually housed in an aluminium chassis, um, which is sort of definitely giving it a lot of size in comparison. It's mounted on a plate with its own anti-vibration mounts there uh, to sort of increase the stability. Uh, you've got a, a billet machined aluminium blade boss that's on there as well. Uh, and it's actually got an integrated um, height of cut motor on it. So that's, a, that's another brushless induction motor. And that's actually integral to the mowing motor itself. So the, the 430X, that has a, an electric height of cut system as well, doesn't yes, it? Yes, that's right. Yes, it does. It works in a slightly different way. So this is the height of cut mechanism. This plastic housing here, um, the mowing motor fits up inside this part of the assembly there's a small brush DC motor just here and that operates a small planetary gearbox which drives these uh, plastic cogs here which move this section up and down so when this motor is held in that housing um, this little DC motor here moves this up and down this sledge so that's oh, okay. how, how that, one that is a little bit different then because this yeah. this shaft actually moves it's uh, it's almost telescoping in the way it comes in and out on there okay so um, they look quite different in their in their size and weight. Mm. So let's weigh the whole assembly. Yeah, of course. Just to see. Yeah, inc yeah, include the height of cut adjustment as well. Um, so if I pop that in there, we've got um, two point one kilos. That's the, mm -hmm. the weight of the mowing motor assembly okay. on there. And by comparison here. Uh, yeah, Brojo is a, almost exactly two kilos heavier at four point one. Does look a lot more metal going on on that mm. one, uh, so uh, I guess that's where the weight comes from. Yes, yeah, you've got the integral housing in there, so that does add to its its overall mass. But yeah, but, yeah. but uh, okay. Let's look at the drive motors on the two robots. This is the one from the Husqvarna 430X. It's a 18 volt brushless induction motor, and it has a planetary gear on this section. Uh, at the front section here, this is a plastic manifold which holds the motor into the chassis of the robot using four screws. The final drive um, is presented here and there's a, a friction plate which the plastic wheel slips over onto and then a nut is used to compress it onto that friction plate just here. You can see it's got the little ribs in it. 
and that's uh, that's the final drive to the wheel. There's no maker's name on the motor. Um, it's a crimped together style motor, the same as it is on the on the mowing one. And uh, yeah, that's that's Osvana. So um, yeah, the drive motor on the 4.0, uh, the, the the base elements are the same. The differences are just a bit more subtle. So again, you've got brush, you've got 24 volt brushless induction motor to planetary gear, and you've got a manifold holding it on the machine as well. Um, the way the uh, the way the motor is put together, it's actually um, a, a hand uh, assembles uh, motor there that's held on by screws rather than crimped. This is actually sort of more an industrial style of of motor. So it's what you'd expect to find in an industrial piece of equipment rather than a domestic homeowner item. Um, and then your manifold is aluminium. Uh, and where the final uh, shaft is, so you've got a hexagonal drive shaft here. And that fits onto a steel hexagonal insert in the wheel. Just nicely there for the drive. So we've just covered drive motors, so it makes sense to look at drive wheels next. So this is the uh, the wheel on the uh, the 4.0 Elite. So it's a it's a nice sort of wide wheel with uh, EPDM rubber tires, so you can see sort of they've got a, a nice sort of flexibility to them. Uh, and when it runs, it runs on a flat spot, so that that's for absolute maximum traction. So this wheel grips the ground really really well. Um, this is a hand assembled unit, so you can see there all the uh, the fixing points, uh, stainless steel fi fittings, uh, and they're all in uh, into threaded inserts. So nothing's actually tapping into plastic there. So all in all, a, a nice serviceable wheel. You can take it apart. You can uh, you can replace the tires if you ever need to. Um, just yeah, uh, just nice wide wheel that gives you plenty of traction. So look at the Husqvarna wheel. This is actually made up of three sections. You've got the plastic hubcap trim. Um, and then inside, there's I assume is a, a dust cover to keep uh, mucking things out of the centre of the wheel, stop it collecting. Uh, it's made of ABS, hard hard plastic, and it's got a, a slightly rubberized feel to the outside. Although, but there's no flex and there's no um, movement in that. It's a, it's a solid wheel. Uh, if we if we look at the two hmm. side by side, you can yeah. see it's quite a bit of difference. And we'll we well, should we weigh them as well just yeah, to see. Of what the difference is. Yeah, you should, yeah include the, the, uh, the caps and the covers as well. Yeah. Put those on there. So, that's 600 grams. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then about uh, uh, 1.3 kilos on the Ambrosia wheel, so significantly, uh, again, a bit more wheel there. Yeah, but, uh, this, it is quite quite strikingly different, isn't it, in the, uh, the way it's made. Okay. Let's have a look at the blades on the 430X. So the 430X uses Husqvarna's standard swing blade cutting system. This consists of an ABS plastic disc with three razor blade style blades attached using step bolts. This is the same blade system used throughout the entire auto mower range, regardless of price or size, they all use this same system. And uh, yeah, it's this disc with the little swing blades attached. These blades, according to the manual, should be replaced every three to four weeks. And it's a simple process. You just remove this screw here, put a new blade on and put the screw back in. So, uh, um, so yeah, the, the blade on the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite, or more accurate, it's got a blade set. Um, so you've got six cutting tips along the edge there. And these are secured to a steel ring inside this plastic casing uh, by stainless steel screws. So um, the, nothing's actually mounted to the plastic itself. It's mount, these are mounted to a metal ring on the inside here. Um, and you do actually have an option of, a, of an alternate blade with the uh, with the Ambrosio 4.0 uh, Elite, um, in, you can go for a, a more standard Ambrosio star blade. It's common on quite a few other models. It's really more of a preference thing. Um, I would say the, uh, the, the this style of blade, typically you'd expect it to change it after about six months of use, whereas we'd expect this to last sort of closer to a year. In addition to the swing blade cutting system, the Husqvarna has a, a free running bearing which sits in the centre of the disc and a, a, a lightweight aluminium disc which just gives a bit of protection to the, uh, the plastic blade holder behind it, allows it to spin independently when it's coming close to the ground. Right, we'll just weigh the uh, two blade systems just so we can get a feel for the components they're made from. 
So looking at 250 grams. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Ambrosia 4.0 blade set, uh, that weighs 360. That difference in weight slightly because of the steel ring that's inside yeah. holding those blade tips on. Right, so we're, going to, we're just going to talk display screens first. So this is, I've separated this from the, the main board. This is how it would normally seat um, in the Ambrosio 4.0, but I've just taken this off, off of another board just to, uh, just to show. So you've got a, um, uh, you've got a touch screen here. So it's, a, it's an LCD full color touch screen or, with a, or with a, the screen has a touch overlay rather to be more accurate. Um, and then uh, the width is it's 10 centimeters by six centimeters as well. So you sort of a nice big clear display there for you to interact with. So what have you got on your screen? So on the Husqvarna 430X, this is a, a fairly common display to, to most of the Ultimo range. This is a black and white LCD display uh, with a backlight. It's, it's uh, not touch screen, it has a keypad for in, inputting your settings. Um, but yeah, so that's a, it's a more generic uh, old school style LCD display and it's just uh, just black and white and that's uh, four centimeters by 7.2 centimeters. Now we're going to look at the wire sensors on both these robots. The Husqvarna has four wire sensors, two at the front and two at the back. The ones at the front are mounted on this dedicated PCB. They're two ferret wound um, sensors and they're soldered onto this board. It's quite a simple um, PCB and that's mounted right at the front of the chassis and the two at the rear are actually integrated onto the motherboard PCB. We'll talk about this a bit more uh, shortly but the two rear ones are actually mounted onto this board. So um, in the Ambrosio 4.0 we have ultimately the same kind of system but arranged in a very different way so you've got a, a similar kind of uh, a, a ferret wire coil um, wire sensors here so you've got two here and these are at the front of the machine they're actually separate from the board itself so they're more serviceable in that sense you can replace an individual wire sensor if you ever needed to and then the two at the back are mounted in the chassis so you probably can't see that on the camera there but this wire and this wire just connect to them down there inside the chassis itself um, so this board arrangement looks quite different from the Husqvarna one because this, this, this is actually housing a couple of different things. So you've also got the bump sensor, which uses um, the Hall Effect sensors as we sort of showed earlier with the action of the mechanical bump. And it's also got two drop-off sensors here. So if the, if the front wheels, if the shaft moves on the 4.0 Elite, it will detect that it's sort of dropped or been lifted. Does the 430X have anything similar to that? No, the, the front wheels on the... Um and the 430X are, are fixed into the chassis and they're mm. rigid, they don't move, so there's no actual drop-off sensor on the front wheels. Right. Um, but yeah, so the, the cover has a, a lift sensor, so if you try to lift the cover, um, it, the robot will notice it, but there's no sensor for a wheel dropping down, say, a mole hill or a rabbit hole or mm. anything like that. Now we're going to look at the GPS and GSM modules on these two robots. Both robots uh, have the ability to utilise GPS signals and can connect to a data network using GSM. This is the board from the Husqvarna 430X. Uh, it's an all-in-one solution where we've got the GPS chipset and the GSM chipset located on the board with its uh, GPS porcelain antenna and we've got the GSM antenna located just here. The two chipsets are made by Ublox, which is a well-known make um, and you know, well-respected. It looks a good quality board and it's all one piece, so antennas, mm. chips, all integrated into that one PCB. Okay, so in the 4.0 Elite, um, this is actually the uh, this is the ZCS Connect module. So this is what you'd see in in any of the Ambrosio Elite models that that can use GSM or GPS. Um, but you've got the same sort of base elements, but arranged in a in a sort of a significantly different way. So you've got your G GSM and GPS module here. It's manufactured by Telet. It's got an integrated SIM, uh, and then the antennas. Uh, so you've got a high gain GPS antenna. And a GSM antenna here. They're actually connected to the board. They're separate units, so uh, they can be they can be replaced or, or even upgraded if there are changes to the manufacturer and there's a there's a better antenna that could potentially be put on it or, or shifted somewhere else in the robot. But they're connected by uh, brass gold-plated connections there. Um, and 
in the um, in the Ambrosia machines, this is actually an independent module, so it runs its own software, it does its own processing power, and it's connected to the rest of the machine by canvas. So uh, very much like uh, elements in a car, uh, they're connected by a canvas system. It, how's the um, how's the board in the 430X connected? Yeah, I forgot to, the rest? to mention that it's, it connects to the motherboard using a serial connection, so more traditional serial connector which carries both power and um, the data back to the motherboard and the processing uh, is actually done on the motherboard for this for this unit. Uh, so now we're just going to have a really in-depth look at the motherboards on these machines. So um, the 4.0 Elite's motherboard, um, well I say the 4.0 Elite's motherboard, this is actually the Ambrosio AM4000 motherboard and is found in pretty much every model they do now. Is it, is it, yeah. It's every model they do now, isn't it? They do it, slightly really? different versions of it, but the basis is the same. Yeah. yeah. So um, so this is how it's mounted in the machine. As you can see, the touch screen is mounted directly onto the, onto the board here, uh, and you can see the rest of the board underneath. But as that's in there, I've got another board, I've got a, the same board here, just outside of that casing. So as you can see, it's actually two boards. So they've split the, the logic board, so the, the, the board that does the, all the machines thinking, number crunching, essentially it's, it's sort of main processes. Um, and then the power handling board is separate. So uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, one is to take away heat, um, the other is to take away sort of digital noise as well, so there's less interference with the processing. Um, and it's also, the way they're shaped, they're, there's actually room for airflow in between for even better to cooling. So we'll look at both these boards in detail in just a second. But what's the main board like on the, uh, on so the Husqvarna? The Husqvarna 430X uses a single PCB. It's a multi-layer board, um, as you can just see here. We'll, um, we'll put them down to we and go through mm. the differences between them. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, as you can see, we've laid out the motherboards so you can get a better look at them. Um, so we're going to talk about all the individual components in turn, so you should be able to get a good look at that as we point them out now. Um, I think the best place to start is the processor itself, the, uh, the CPU, uh, which is essentially the brain of the machine. It's where all its uh, computational um, sort of power is, is, is held and where it does all of its calculations. Um, so, on the Ambrosia board, that's here. So that's this, this, this sort of big processor here. Uh, so that's a, uh, an ARM Cortex M3 32-bit processor. Um, whereabouts is the, um, the processor on the Husqvarna board? So on the 430X, this uh, unit here, that, that's the chip which is the main processor. And despite its tiny size, it's actually the same uh, family of processor, an ARM Cortex M3 32-bit processor. It's just in a, a much smaller uh, package. So uh, the, the pins on this chip are mounted through the board, it's a multi-layer board, rather than on the, on the sides, but the actual processing power is, is exactly the same. Okay. So we look at the capacitors used on this motherboard. They're of the solid type, which is generally what you find on uh, servers, PC motherboards, laptops. They're high quality, long service life, very reliable, uh, type of capacitors. Okay, it looks and, um, like you've probably got the same as well, Sam. Yes, yeah, you can see the same kind of solid capacitors sort of all dotted around. Um, overall, uh, a lot of the ones on the Ambrosio board are a bit larger, which isn't surprising because they're handling a larger voltage because the, the machine runs on a, a higher voltage battery. But, but ultimately, the type of capacitors that are being used are the same. One of the things you might recognise on the uh, Husqvarna board here is this um, USB connector. This is used for dealer servicing and um, updating of the, the robot software, uh, connecting via the Husqvarna service software to the dealer's uh, laptop. Okay. Um, so that's interesting because on the uh, with the Ambrosia machines, there's actually no need for the dealer to make physical contact with the board. So if the dealer wants to sort of look at what the machine's doing, interrogate it as <laughs> as you might say, um, they can connect to it by the Bluetooth four module here. So that is that's the same Bluetooth module that you use to connect to the machine with the app if you're a consumer or a dealer uh, with either the the remote or the service app. Um, so that is that sort of governs the the Bluetooth connectivity there from the board. 
what you might also notice, uh, moreover, um, you might recognise this piece here. So that's a that's an SD card that's just mounted on the board there. That records all the machine's operational logs, any bump event, any time the blade stops or starts, any time it goes out to work, and that's all stored here. And the machine transmits that information to the cloud as well. So. A technician, a service technician, can view remotely what that machine's been doing and give you support if, you're, if you've got anything you need support with or even just view the operation logs on it. So that's all stored in there. It's kind of like a black box. If you, if you think of a black box on a, uh, on a plane or a ship, it, it, it serves the same purpose. Let's have a look at the type of power connectors. So the way that the mowing motors and drive motors connect to the board. So they're using um, 20 amp Molinex connectors and we've got the left and right drive motors and the mowing motors um, and so they're a, yeah, a 20 amp Molinex connector. Okay, so on the Ambrosio we've got 30 amp Hirose connectors, so those are the ones for the drive motors and that's for the blade motor. Um, and uh, you've also got, you might notice, you probably recognise these if you've ever worked on a car, uh, you've got these replaceable fuses. So you've got a 20 amp fuse and that's, uh, that's for this board and then you've got a 1 amp fuse and that is for the logic board. So those are replaceable fuses, very common if you've ever worked in the automotive industry, you'll recognise these straight away. So next we'll just look at how devices are connected to the board. So um, on the Ambrosio board, uh, you've, you've got canvas connectors here at the front. Um, you, I've mentioned the word canvas before. Uh, as I said earlier, it, it, it's essentially it's what you, it's what's used in the automotive industry as a standard or pretty much everything in your car, unless you've got a particularly old one, uh, will be connected by canvas. It, what that means is essentially you can daisy chain devices together. Um, it's, it's a very efficient way of devices communicating with each other in, this, in a system. Uh, and what's really good about it from a development point of view is it's really, really easy to add new devices to a canvas system. So uh, it, the board in that sense is future proofed in its design. So if there are any new devices that need to be added to the system, it's very, very easy to do that via canvas because everything's speaking the same language, essentially. Um, how are the devices connected on the 430X? So the uh, auxiliary devices on the 430X are connected by these individual serial connectors. So each device, like your GPS module or your front wire sensor board, has a, a socket and it's plugged in. Um, you can't daisy chain these devices, they all have to be individually plugged in uh, with their own serial connector. One of the things I see is absent on this board, but I can see on yours, is these two uh, coloured boxes here. What, what are those, Sam? Uh, yes, so the, the, glad you brought those up. So they are automotive style uh, relays. They're, they're really, really high capacity, so they handle the, uh, the incoming power and the charging of the battery. Um, they are, in truth, massively over-specced for, for any of the current batteries that any of the Ambrosio machines use, which means that they're going to do their job really, really well. But also, uh, again, it's another way the board is future-proofed. If Ambrosio go for larger and larger and larger batteries, the board is, uh, is designed to handle that. So that's what these are. All right. Yeah, the, the power switching is handled by uh, these MOSFETs on this section of the board here on the uh, Husqvarna. So here on the Ambrosio board, we've got an embedded IMU gyro, compass, and accelerometer. Um, so the gyro, uh, if, if the machine's on a, on a slope or at an angle, it can uh, sort of detect its orientation and, and, and correct that so it doesn't sort of go off to the side. A compass, I'm going to assume everyone watching this video knows what a compass is. Uh, and then the accelerometer can uh, detect the speed of the machine. So if it comes to a sudden stop, in addition to the bump sensor, uh, the board can detect that and act on it as it needs to. So on the Husqvarna board we've, we've scrutinised all the components and we, we can't actually identify an accelerometer or a gyro. There, there must be one on there we would assume um, but we actually just haven't been able to identify it. Uh, we've looked very closely at all the components on the board and none of them appear to be one. That doesn't mean there isn't one, it's just we haven't been able to identify it. Right, now we're going to look at the power handling of the motor drivers. So these are the components here. This bank of MOSFET transistors is what's responsible for speeding up the motors, slowing them down, breaking the blade motor in an emergency. Uh, that's all handled by, by this bank here. They're made by Alpha Omega and they're rated at 12 amps. Uh, they run at uh, 30 milliohms 
Um, so they, they run quite warm, um, but uh, yeah, they, they run at 30 milliohms and uh, they're rated at 12 amps. Okay, so we also got MOSFETs on uh, on this board. They're not quite as obvious because they're below this massive aluminium heat sink that's really overkill. I'll, I'll go go into that in, in a second. Uh, but underneath here, you've got eight high power Infineon Optimos 3 MOSFETs. Um, so they run at uh, 6.2 milliohms. So they run a lot cooler in general, but they're also mounted underneath this huge huge heat sink that, that helps them run 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 really cool so, so you, you're very unlikely uh, to get any sort of overheating on here and that's that's in addition to the boards being being separate and having air cooling so these are 75 amp mosfets that are under here as well so they can they can handle a really really high current too so given that these MOSFETs are handling a battery that's rated at 8.7 amp and these can operate up to 75 amp, it just gives you a really a, an idea of, of how over-engineered these components are, um, which is really only benefit. Now I'm going to show you how the charging contacts work on these two robots. On the Husqvarna 430X, the charging contacts are located at the front of the uh, bumper shell here. They're made of copper and they Drive foot, the robot drives forward into the base station and plugs itself in. Okay, so uh, by comparison on the 4.0 Elite, you've actually got two stainless steel strips there, so that's what makes contact with the base station. And they're actually located on the back of the machine, so this machine reverses into charge. You've also got a winter charging port here that you can directly plug a charger into. Uh, now, I'll just briefly show you. So this is a uh, this is a designed as a separate module that you can remove and um, replace with, uh, with, with either the same thing if you ever need to for service reasons, or with something completely different. So I'll just show you how it comes off. It's so simple, it's just these two screws here. Yeah, it just lifts straight out there. So you can see, this is actually canvas controlled as well, like a lot of the elements inside the machine. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's your standard charger. There is an induction charger available, but possibly a little more exciting than that. We've done a full video on this, we'll put a link to that in the description as well. Uh, but this is the Ambrosio Z defence system, so you can see you've got the same charging contacts at the bottom there. Um, but what this is, it sprays insect repellent on your lawn. Um, so there's, a, there's a, a specific sort of mixture that it's designed to work with. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll talk about that in a lot more detail in the other video, but that is another option that you can have at the back there. So the, the modularity is a really nice key feature. We'll put a link to that in the description. So that brings the video to an end. I really hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Uh, it is interesting to see the choice of materials the two different manufacturers make. Uh, from a brochure picture or a website image, it's, it's not easy to see the difference between two different products. But we hope we've brought that to life for you. We've tried just to show you exactly the way it is uh, so you can see for yourself and make your own decision. And um, if, you're, if you've got any questions about any of the robots we've shown here or any other robots, please feel free to contact us. If you give our sales team a ring, the number will be in the description below. Or alternatively, if you're in the Lincoln area, pop by to our showroom and uh, we, we can show you the robots in person. Maybe not to this degree that we've disassembled them today, but, but we can absolutely, we'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. We've got the job of putting these back together now. Yeah. As well, so. <laughs> Let's get cracking on that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Just one more thing, if you have enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel and we'll keep uh, making more videos and uh, showing you how products work.